Good evening, Exiles. Today we will be looking at an Archmage Stormbrand Hierophant. This build is an Archmage Stormbrand Hierophant. It is a monostacker, very tanky, and has great damage uptime on any and all bosses. The ability to drop your brands and focus on evading boss damage without compromising your DPS output allows for safe, consistent boss fights. Several defensive layers through the use of Mind Over Matter, extra Mind Over Matter through Illuminated Devotion, thanks to our Ascendancy, as well as our chest, either a Cloak of Defiance or a Shaper Influence chest, Corrupted Soul through a Glorious Vanity of Doriani, Life Leech, as well as Energy Shield Leech, not to mention Ailment Immunity while we have Arcane Surge, which is all of the time, Arcane Cloak also provides a very large amount of mitigation and is up almost constantly. Excellent consistent damage which scales well through several different sources and a variety of modifiers such as Mana, which is also EHP for us, effective health pool, lightning damage, spell damage, elemental damage, and increases to gem level. The damage is also very consistent only having to drop your brands once every 6 seconds or so. You don't have to sit toe to toe with the enemy which allows you to evade boss damage all while doing damage. It's easy to start. It has no weird leveling specs. We get storm brand at level 12 and we use that from then on. It scales very well into the end game and is a good boss farmer once properly geared. Which there are several ways to gear up your character. Able to be done in softcore trade, hardcore trade, softcore solo self found or hardcore solo self found the main build was designed around a few key uniques but can easily be done without until you can farm up currency or find any alternatives resulting in what i would consider a low to mid investment build that can handle all content can do even the toughest of boss encounters like the maven if you have a good memory Maven witnessed Uber Elder, as you are seeing here, Awaken level 9 Cirrus, any and all conquerors, Shaper, Shaper and Elder Guardians, Breach Lords, and all of their respective invitations. It can also even do Aziri and Uber Aziri with the help from a Hunter Ring with the stat Reduced Elemental Reflect Damage Taken, Soul of Yugle, and the Anoint Exposure Tolerance. Also with the introduction of ultimatums, this is an excellent build for those types of encounters. For the ability to kite while doing damage, along with our sizable, effective health pool, consistent damage output. The build can also be modified slightly to be fully SSF friendly as I have provided alternatives to the key uniques and path of building provided below in the description. Leveling this build is a breeze. No funky leveling specs. We get Stormbrand at level 12. And we never look back. From there we simply add in the appropriate supports as we get them. The leveling is fast and fun as we just drop our brands and go. By the time we hit the next pack, the previous pack is dead. We can either recall our brands. There is no duration left. Or recast our brands again. Easy peasy. The build gets stronger as the gems level, so a simple level 20 vendor recipe wand can carry you all the way to maps. There is a detailed leveling guide in the path of building located in the notes section. Without further ado, let's get into the passive. To start out, we are going to take the first two notables to the west of the Templar start. We're going to come out the north side through the intelligence, into retribution, discipline and training, and holy dominion for some early elemental resistances as well as elemental damage. From there, we will beeline straight for elemental overload, providing a very significant portion of elemental damage for the build. After elemental overload, we will come down to explosive runes for an additional brand increased brand damage and increased brand attachment range after we take 
explosive runes we will come over to rune binder going through the duration side once we have rune binder We will grab Light of Divinity for one point, and then we will come across to Arcanist Dominion, Heart and Soul, Deep Wisdom, and into Arcane Will, as well as Lightning Walker. After we have those notables, we will come down and grab Devotion for a lot of life and strength for gems and gear requirements. After Devotion, we will grab Quick Recovery for Life and Mana Regen. From there, we will come down and grab Forethought and Arcane Capacitor. Once we have Arcane Capacitor, we can then grab Mind Over Matter, which should happen somewhere around the end of Act 5, so either right before or after fighting Katava. Once we have Mind Over Matter, we come down through Shaper, into Dynamo, Constitution, and Battle Ruse. Once we have Battle Ruse, we will grab Deep Thoughts and Mystic Bulwark. Once we have picked up Mystic Bulwark, we will then grab Cool Preparation, Prodigal Perfection, fill out some more Life Notables in the Scion Constitution Wheel, Security of Flesh, come into Arcane Guarding for some spell block and spell damage while holding a shield. This jewel socket right here, as well as come up and start to work on our cluster jewel setup, which we should have at least something to work with by this point. I have included a detailed list of notables. In order of importance, always go for three notables and the lowest of passives added, which is normally eight. You can get away with nines early, but I would shoot for eight. You can run either a lightning, an elemental, or a spell. A spell damage cluster. The best being lightning, then elemental, and then spell. But any of the three will work. Scintillating idea, Dorianis, and disorienting would be the best overall but any combination of these on any one of these will do i have also included a list of notables for small clusters mana being the best we want to use ideally we want to use two small manas with scintillating on both but you could also use one scintillating and one openness as i have chose to do here or a clarity of purpose or one mana one life whatever you can get your hands on early will really do so from there, we move on to our, our end game setup with no major unique jewels, which is basically just us filling out jewel sockets here, 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 a little bit more life here, here, and there on top of the witch start, as well as a few points in the purity of flesh. And this mana and mana regen there. And we take the rest of our cluster jewel set up here. Once we have farmed up either the currency or our gear for our final end game setup, we will move our cluster jewel setup to the west side of the Templar. We will then put a Glorious Vanity in the name of Doriani on the north side of the Templar Jewel in between Witch and Templar. And choose this keystone here for Corrupted Soul. Come back to that in a second. We will put a Might of the Meek here at the Scion section of the Mana for the reason of instead of 8, 8, and 8 increased maximum mana, it now gives us 12. Not reflected in Path of Building. Instead of 10% increased mana regen rate, we get 15, as well as 7% increased mana cost of skills instead of 5. And we get 
7% increased maximum life instead of 5 through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the life notables in the Scion life wheel. We do lose out on the notable shaper, but by this point, the benefits far outweigh the cons of that there. We will also be using a large thread of hope with as least amount of minus resistance as you can. We are picking up Heart of Thunder for increased lightning damage, lightning pen, and lightning damage leeches energy shield. Light Eater for spell damage leeches energy shield and increased maximum total recovery per second from energy shield leech. Utmost Intellect, which gives us a very large portion of mana and energy shield. Arcane Focus, which is our only source of energy shield scaling, besides utmost intellect, as well as we will be unallocating this small elemental damage notable here to save on point. We will also lose this life node, this life node, as well as Light of Divinity, and this mana and mana regen point here to make room for the points there. Our cluster jewel is down here, as we said. Now let's get on to the Corrupted Soul notable. Corrupted Soul, it makes us gain 15% of maximum life as extra energy shield. It says 20 here, but it got slightly nerfed in 3.14. It also states that 50% of non-chaos damage taken bypasses energy shield. Now this is a very good thing for us. Since we have a very large portion of energy shield, about 5,000. We have about 4.5 to 4.6k depending on your gear. Some Maybe you can get up to 5k with some very, very good gear. So that makes all damage, assuming it's non-chaos, get split between our energy shield and our life. The damage that does go through to our life then gets split between our life and our mind over matter of 50%, resulting in our life only taking 25% of the incoming damage, which can easily be recouped through leech, regen, and other means of recovery, which I will go over now are ascendancy choices. To start, we will start with Divine Guidance. I like to take Divine Guidance first. As you can see, I have a detailed leveling tree here, which goes over everything step by step. If you have any questions or concerns, it is there in 20 level increments, as well as our Ascendancy. The first Ascendancy point I like to take is Divine Guidance. The big chunk of early maximum mana gives us 30% increased maximum mana as well as 10% of damage is taken from mana before life as well as the tag transfiguration of mind which states increases and reductions to maximum mana also apply to damage at 30% of their value so even this early at level 40 we have a very large portion of Increase maximum mana on our tree, 176. So 30% of that is being transferred and being applied to our damage. And it is global damage. Not restricted to spell damage, attack damage. It's just global damage at 30% of this value. So it's very nice early on. From there, the Cruel Lab, I like to take Arcane Blessing, which gives us 50% increase of effect of Arcane Surge on you as well as the line gain arcane surge when you or your totems hit an enemy with a spell. However, that is not a very important line as we have arcane surge in our main links, which we will go over in a second. Merciless Lab, we grab Illuminated Devotion, which has ailment immunity when we have arcane surge, which is up pretty much all of the time as long as we are casting our brands which is always 
a half a percent of spell damage leeches life while you have arcane surge which may not seem like a lot but it is a nice amount to have especially when we have our corrupted soul only taking 25 percent of the damage we easily recoup that back with that half a percent spell damage leeches life for our uber lab i like to take Sign of Purpose for Brand Recall Increased Cooldown Recovery Rate as well as the 100% more Activation Frequency if 75% of Attached Duration has expired. You can also take Conviction of Power if you really wanted to for the extra Minimum Endurance Charges. I, however, like to use Sign of Purpose for the more damage and 100% Increased Cooldown Recovery Rate on our brand recall our watcher's eye setup that which i like to use is gain maximum mana as extra energy shield while affected by clarity since we are kind of stacking this modifier through our watcher's eye and we also get 15 percent of max life as extra energy shield i also had life gain for each enemy hit while affected by vitality that is not a necessary stat but it is a very very nice stat since our brands are hitting quite a bit and it does not specify to attacks it's only enemy hit so it does work for spells i have also included a list of watcher's eye modifiers that are very good for this build first one being the one that i just mentioned maximum mana as extra energy shield while affected by clarity followed very very closely by Damage taken from mana before life while affected by clarity. Life gain for each enemy hit while affected by vitality. Damage penetrates lightning res while affected by wrath. Lightning damages leeches energy shield while affected by wrath. And mana recovery rate while affected by clarity. If you can get one of these mods, that would be great. I like to use the mana as extra energy shield to get us a large portion of energy shield. I believe that wraps up all of the tree. So now we can move on to the gems. Our main damage source is going to be Stormbrand, as mentioned earlier, linked to Archmage. Lightning Pen. I have Awakened Lightning Pen slotted in here, but you can use regular Lightning Pen. will work just fine until you can work your way up to this. Concentrated Effect. Arcane Surge, and Energy Leech. I have listed these in order of importance, so if you only had a 5 link, you would go Stormbrand, Archmage, Lightning Pen, Conk Effect, Arcane Surge. And if you only had a 4 link, you would do Archmage, Lightning Pen, Conk Effect. You would then put your Arcane Surge onto your Arcane Cloak. However, we use it in our main links for pretty much permanent uptime. We also use Vitality, Clarity, and Sigil Power. I also use a Portal Gem because I hate picking up Portal Scrolls. Flame Dash as our moving movement skill. Orb of Storms linked to Onslaught to keep up Onslaught as well as proc our Elemental Overload a little bit more. Arcane Cloak is attached to Second Wind, Increased Duration, as well as Brand Recall. Brand Recall will not gain any benefit from increased duration, but it does get the increased cooldown from Second Wind. We also use two Cast on Damage Taken setups, both at level 1. The first one being a Cast on Damage Taken Cold Snap and Blade Blast setup. Be wondering, why are we using Blade Blast and Cold Snap on a Stormbrand build? Blade Blast has the tag that unnerve enemies for 4 seconds on hit. Unnerve makes enemies take 10% increased spell damage, which basically reads as deal 10% more damage, as take increased is a more multiplier. Hold Snap offers us a chance to gain frenzy charges when an enemy dies in the skills area. Keep in mind that the enemy does not have to die to the cold snap, it only has to die within the cold snap. 
chilling area. Try to get a Vol Cold Snap, as this will allow you to keep up frenzy charges while bossing with bosses with no adds. Second, Cast on Damage Taken setup. We use Cast on Damage Taken at level 1. A Wave of Conviction, keep this under level 7, otherwise it will not proc off of the level 1. I like just keep mine at level 1. It's at level 3 here because I forgot and leveled it, but keep it under level 7. So we have Cast on Damage Taken, Wave of Conviction, attached with a level 20 Hex Touch and a level 20 Conductivity. The reason why this works is because the cast on damage taken is only proccing the wave of conviction and then the wave of conviction is then proccing the hex touch and, and conductivity. We also use wrath which is located in our essence worm. Do not use wrath if you do not have an essence worm yet. We do not want to reserve 50% of our mana because we get survivability and damage from our mana. Essence Worm will allow us to use the Wrath without reserving any mana, as well as giving us levels to the Socketed of Aura Gems. This would be a good time to go over some gear. I will go over the, the Uniques first. I'm, we use a Mind Spiral for the tag of 10% maximum mana as extra ES, as well as a very high flat mana and percent lightning damage. We use a Cloak of Defiance for the Mind Over Matter Keystone, saving us a point on the tree, an extra 10% of Mind Over Matter, as well as percent mana regen per second, and up to 150 flat mana as well as some decent evasion and energy we use an Aziri's foible anointed with mind drinker for a lot of the same reasons as the coke we it gives us a large portion of flat mana gives us percentage increased mana a very large amount of increased mana regen rate as well as the the line items and gems have 25% reduced attribute requirements helping us out with a little bit of our gem requirements and earring as stated before we use an essence worm with our wrath in if you don't have an essence worm do not run wrath level it in your offhand I go over some of this stuff in the notes very detailed section here we have a leveling section we have list of enchants our preferred anoint bandits unique alternatives if you're running early game or SSF speaking of bandits we help Alira first and then respec into Aramir when in maps and you have enough resistance to mana regen usually around mid to late 80s I have also included base jewel modifiers, which is good for the build, both prefixes and suffixes. Weapon stats, best in slot would either be an opal wand or a void or sombar scepter with either very high spell damage, very high lightning damage, very high mana, plus to the level of all lightning spells or hybrid spell and mana. Suffixes, not many suffixes work well for us. So cast speed, lightning damage, mana regen. That's what you're looking at. We prefer to use percentage increase spell or lightning damage over flat because the percentage increase scales our arc mage way more than a little bit of flat does on a weapon. As stated before, we have a list of different clusters and notables that you could use as well as well as watcher's eye modifier here in the notes the rest of the rares your weapon as stated before can either be a wand or a scepter shield you want to look for high spell block high spell damage life mana resistances your gloves fingerless silks are best in slot again high life high mana maybe any missing stats here i chose to take dexterity because we were short on decks 
and any resistances you might need. Boots, life, movement speed, mana, resistances. Uh, I also use a mana, a percent increased mana ring with life, mana, mana regen, any missing stats or resistances you can also put on there. We use a Stygian Vice with life, resistances, and mana. Most of the rares, I think you get the idea. You're just grabbing life, mana, resistances. Uh, the flask setup. We use a... That's not right. We use an enduring eternal mana flask of warding. So we can be curse immune pretty much all of the time. A cinder swallow urn, which helps us with the life, mana, energy shield sustain while mapping. If you don't have a cinder swallow, you can use either a, a basalt or a quartz flask. I often switch out a cinder swallow for a quartz when bossing, since recover life, mana, energy shield when you kill an enemy doesn't really work too much while bossing. An ample quicksilver of adrenaline, a seething divine life flask of staunching, as well as a Rumi's concoction for extra attack and spell block. If you don't have a Rumi's, you could use a granite or a basalt or a quartz instead. Also, you could use a wise oak if you're balanced for, for lightning damage or if you can get triple balance some way. And that, I think, wraps up the gear section. So that's pretty much the build. We are a Stormbrand Hierophant, utilizing Arc Mage and Mana Stacking, as well as Corrupted Soul, a Glorious Vanity in the name of Doriani, Cluster Jewels, wait, wait, that, oops, Cluster Jewels, Might of the Meek here, and a Thread of Hope up here to grab some notables that are out of the way, resulting in a very high energy shield and life pool. I believe that wraps up everything with the build. If you have any questions about the build, or anything I mentioned in the video, feel free to stop by my Twitch. We stream every day. Um, we are usually around to answer questions. The Twitch is twitch.tv Deedle do D E E D L E D O. The link will be down in the description. And thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys have a great league launch. Later.